Hello, and welcome to Change the Face of Yoga, teaching toddlers through golden oldies. I'm very excited to be talking to lots of yoga teachers who will explain their passion for teaching yoga to students with different ages, physical fitness levels, wellness levels, and different goals. They will explain the benefits of yoga for these students and will be including teacher tips and pose modifications. I am Stephanie Cunningham of Yoga Lightness, and I've been teaching over 50s for 10 years. So this area is my passion and the passion of many other yoga teachers that you will be listening to in this series. Thank you so much for listening, and let's get started. This is the 111th episode of Changing the Face of Yoga. And my guest today is Jackie Barbie, and she's from Sunny Bee Yoga. She's in um, Florida in the U.S. She's a 200-hour, soon-to-be experienced RYT, and she specializes in accessible yoga for all. She's trained with Diane Bondi and Amber Karn, Karens in Yoga for All and Giovanna Heyman of Accessible Yoga. It is her passion, and she believes her dharma to help bring yoga to those that can benefit from the practice but don't fit the stereotypical image of a yoga practitioner. I love this. I tell clients that call on the phone who have never seen me and are afraid of trying yoga that I'm a fat, gray-haired lady with fibromyalgia teaching the yoga class. You will be fine. (laughs) I think it's great. (laughs) Um, She teaches a variety of classes, really impressive variety. Uh, Wheelchair yoga, Uh, chair yoga classes, beginner and gentle classes. She works privately with people in their homes. So she's really got the full spectrum, shall we say, of students who may need a little different kind of yoga. And we're going to talk about some of those different kinds right now. So welcome, Jackie. I'm so glad that you're here. Is there anything that you'd like to add to that introduction? Oh, wow, that was um, that was great. Thank you. It's always kind of interesting to hear that back when when I write <laughs> that down. Yeah, I get a lot of people who call me on the phone and and say I'm too old or I'm too fat or I can't do yoga. And I like I said, I just tell them, trust me. When you see me, you will feel okay. You'll think, oh, if she can do this, I can do this. So um, I think I I think I bring a lot of people to ease just visually and then we have fun <laughs> great now, i i taught seniors and i think it, it it they were very nervous that they would get someone very young you know who and i'm not so <laughs> I, I think that helped you know because i i knew what they were going through and i i understand yeah. what you're saying yeah um i really want to i i'll give you all these contact details later um to people to my listener but um I really want to tell them about your Instagram account because you have all these wonderful pictures of modifications of really common yoga um, yoga poses. And I especially like boat pose. I thought that was quite clever. <laughs> um, but I'd just like to talk a little bit about how your yoga teaching, your yoga guiding of your students um, includes all those modifications and and how I've had a trouble with when I do modifications, everybody wants to do the most intense one or the most difficult one. And sometimes it's really hard to get them to say, yeah, that's great. You can do that. We can work towards that. But why don't, why don't we think about it like this way too? And sometimes that works and a lot of times it doesn't. So <laughs> what... Uh, <laughs> What, what, how do you, how do you introduce and kind of guide people to modifications that might be a little better for their body? So we start with that first and we start with the simplest and maybe even they might not even feel like they're in the yoga pose to begin with. Um, We might maybe, like you said, boat pose. So maybe we'll start with the bolster propped up behind our back and just do that and then ease into something a little bit more. Or if we're in the chair, maybe we're just lifting the feet one at a time. And we just ease into it slowly so that we just say, hey, if this feels good, stay here. But if you want to be a little curious, let's let's try this. And if you go there and that doesn't feel good, 
come back to this where it did feel good and safe. Safe is always a big word for me. Um, and then we just throughout the practice introduce a little bit more and a little bit more and then remind them, don't forget we have these options too. So we usually have maybe four different options of a pose uh, that we work on in a class. And like I said, a lot of times it's very subtle. They don't realize that they're doing this, what they might look at if they were to open up an an average Instagram page and say, I could never do that. Mm. Um, But they're doing their version of the pose that fits their body, which is what's the most important thing to me. Yeah. So in a subtle way, you're really asking them to really pay attention to their body and how it feels. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I don't want everybody to look alike. I tell everybody in the classroom, if everybody's in a different version of the pose, that makes me extremely happy because that means my job of making them comfortable in their own body that I was successful because that's when I'm, I'm trying to get everybody to listen to their body. I'm not trying to do what the person next to them is doing. Right. Oh, I think that's excellent. I really do. Um, I noticed that your, you said, I think on your Facebook page, I'm not sure, um, that you're starting to create video content. Yes. So I have a 15-year-old daughter who is an aspiring videographer. Um, she's taking all kinds of classes, Has all is already accumulating certifications um, in video editing, photo editing, things like that. So she is uh, very interested in creating videos. We actually did one yesterday. She impresses me in how she can whip these together, edit them very quickly, and make it look like uh, it was the easiest thing in the world. And so we're working on that. We're trying to do that because I have um, people in different states, different areas who are saying, I wish I could come to, if I could, if I had you as a yoga teacher, I, I would go to yoga, which I know that there's like hundreds of other me's out there. They're just afraid to try. So I figure I can at least get them started by practicing online with me. Maybe they can do some of the videos and and they just need to do one video and they're officially a yogi and, and uh, mm-hmm. hopefully that make them feel better. My sisters are in Pennsylvania. I really would like for them to practice chair yoga. Um, I'm the baby of the family and I have lived over a thousand miles away from them for 30 years now. Mm. So um, this is a way for me to bring a practice to them and to just to anybody who's just interested in and trying some modified yoga, some adaptive yoga, whatever works in their body. Okay, so how do you do that? Because I've always been concerned that if people are just watching me, I can't really tell what's going on with them. Or is it kind of a two-way thing like like on Zoom or something like that? That would be a great long-term. That is something I hope to work towards in the future. I've seen that there are platforms where you can practice, where you can see people and do that. Right now, we're just doing very basic, simple, beginner chair yoga type things um, that I really feel like anybody can really easily follow follow along. Um, We're not doing anything complicated that they need someone quite there. It's not much different from anybody getting a yoga DVD or going on, I say go on YouTube, but these videos will actually, we posted our first YouTube video today. (laughs) <laughs> and um, it's and it's on Sunny B Yoga on YouTube. You can look that up, and we'll plan on adding more okay. as we go along. Great. Yeah. Um, so I I did see some videos. I don't know if your daughter had anything to do with them, but it, I was so tickled at them because they were at very fast pace. <laughs> people were going up and down and around, and, and it was a little. It was kind of it was kind of fun. It really was. And I thought, you know, that that's very clever to make to to say, you know, yoga can be fun. It's not always terribly, terribly serious. <laughs> and so, so yeah, a lot of times we do our family yoga videos and we actually get a lot of people requesting, I haven't seen a Barbie family high speed yoga video lately. So we like to go hiking a lot or camping and we'll put up the, we'll put up the, the iPhone and put it on high speed uh, video, taping it at high speed. And just so that they can just see like, this is our real life. This is actually what we do. Um, this is 
just for Instagram. And we don't always videotape it, obviously, but people will say, oh, I, I need a Barbie family video. So <laughs> we'll post them up sometimes just for fun. If anybody really ever wants to practice the yoga that we're doing in the high speed, I'll be happy to write down the poses for them. But <laughs> I did started doing them high speed because I was always so nervous about posting pictures and posting videos of myself doing yoga. Um, just very self-conscious of the way I looked, but it became a thing of representation matters. And if people don't see me in a bigger body, in an older body, in a body with chronic illness doing yoga, then they're never going to think that they can do yoga. So representation matters. We have to all be posting these pictures and posting these videos so that they don't only see in white, 24 year old women standing on a rock off a cliff doing yoga, you know, like that's not all that it is. It's, it's being silly. So someone had told me, um, do your first videos at high speed because nobody will see the mistakes or though nobody will see the things like that and you won't be as self-conscious and it will just be creating, you know, the practice for yourself. So now I can do it slower, but it's it's really just for fun. <laughs> it was it was it was fun, and I I think that I think that's a representation too that sometimes kind of gets lost um, in yoga that it it's very very serious and it's a practice and it you know it has a philosophy and all of that is true and it's great but it, it also can be very very enjoyable you know to be laughter is a, people yeah yes laughter is a huge part of my teaching I think I like to try to keep things light and humorous. Um, I think laughter helps people relax. Um, they they come into a beginner's class or it's their first time in their wheelchair class or something. Then if I can make them laugh, you know, they they just relax just a little bit. It's a stress reliever. They, they're mm-hmm. laughing with the people around them. So it immediately starts to build community. And um, someone once told me laughter is a breath practice too. So I think laughter and yoga is really really important. So sometimes I call myself a yoga median, but I, I don't mean to dishonor the practice. It is really mostly just to make people more um, relaxed with, them, with, their, with themselves. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's kind of segue into the wheelchair yoga um, class that you teach. I think you said it was your most favorite class. I, I have tried it. I found it quite difficult. What, how do you, what would a, what would a, average, a normal, whatever kind of class we want to call it, look like in a wheelchair class? So I teach um, wheelchair at a nursing facility. It's a nursing home. Most of these are long-term residents. So there's strict rules, no touching, no standing. They can't get out of their wheelchairs um, for safety reasons, obviously. Mm -hmm. So at first I thought, what am I going to do? Like we can only do so much with our arms and I'm supposed to be there for an entire hour. So how am I going to do this? And then the average age is probably 85 to 90 Mm. is the average age. So what in the world am I going to do? Well, let me tell you, I run out of time in that hour because we have so much fun. We have so much to do. We do move our feet. We move our toes. We might lift our legs. Maybe we're lifting them independently. Maybe we're lifting them using our hands. Mm-hmm. We use our props in our practice. We use straps. We use blocks. Sometimes we'll use the therapy bands. Um, and so we might do a little bit of practice with using our arms and we let them rest. And then we'll focus on our feet and our ankles and uh, spending time pointing and flexing the toes to work the calf muscles because the calf muscles, the second most important muscle for good heart health. And they're sitting in their chairs all day long so that they need to get this blood pumping. They need to get this Mm -hmm. movement. Their back is, their posture becomes um, not really good because they're sinking back into the chair. So we remind them, I remind them throughout the practice, straighten the spine, ground your feet into the floor, pull the shoulders back. And even they just say, just doing that alone just helps them with their breath. And we try to we speed things up a little bit, get a little bit more um, active. It may not look like a like a traditional yoga practice for probably eighty percent of the class. It might just look like exercise or movement, but we spend a lot of time stopping and then take some deep breaths and open up 
open up the airways, lift the chest, lift the heart, do a little introspection, what's happening in the body? How does this feel from when you came into the class? And um, they really love it. A lot of them beg their physical therapists to not make them go to therapy that day, that they can just come to yoga. I've had occupational therapists bring their patients into the yoga class. One occupational therapist said one day, uh, I want you to be in here every Wednesday because you're going to get more out of this class that I can do for you. And I thought that was just an amazing compliment because I'm not a therapist. I don't pretend to be a therapist. I'm not, don't have a medical background. Um, we just have some fun and we just try to move the body. And, and if it's not comfortable for them in that position or that pose, they can just sit there and be in the group. That's That's perfectly fine because community is yoga also. And... Yeah. Um, I just love being in the room with them because they're they're so happy. They're, their spirits lift so much after they've had that movement, that interaction with everyone in the room. And um, and if something, if another somebody who, that their schedule gets canceled, uh, the activities director is, has been told by the by the patients there, call call Jackie so she can come in and do uh, yoga with us. We want an extra yoga class, so yeah. that's exciting. I've, I've seen patients, um, you know, there was a patient who started coming and she had had stroke years ago, wasn't really recovering from anything. And she had a difficult time speaking because she just couldn't get her breath. She started doing yoga and she's practicing things outside of our yoga class. And so at the end of yoga, she would grab my hand and not let me leave because she could talk. Somebody could hear her because her breath had picked up and it stimulated her vocal cords. I don't know anything about this physically or medically, but she wouldn't let me leave. She'd hold on to me because she had a lot to say and she could see it at that time. And that was totally fine with me. She's come a long way. She's been doing all kinds of things. One of the ladies who comes every Wednesday, that's when we have our class. Um, she had me write down some sequences for her. And so she gets up every morning and does yoga in her room before she gets stressed and comes out and does her activities. So I'm really proud of my, I'm really proud of those students there. Oh, those are great testimonials to your teaching. That's wonderful. Well, I've learned so much from them. It's amazing. <laughs> I just walk out every day going, oh my gosh, I just can't believe I got to do that. So <laughs> um, when, when you're teaching these kinds of types of classes, uh, do you have them set goals for themselves, either physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever? Or are you just, um, well, not just, but are you kind of guiding them through uh, the, the practice, uh, given your, you know, much more, much more experience that you have? We come in and, and the very first thing we always do is we just tell our body, thank you for showing up for us today, whatever it looks like today whatever is going to happen in our bodies today. They might be feeling more pain. They might have a little bit more limitation. Maybe they're having a good day and they can move a little bit more, but just to thank their body for showing up and that we honor it wherever it is. If I say, you know, lift your arms up as high as they can go. If it's just two inches off your lap and the person next to you can put their fingertips towards the ceiling, perfectly fine that's where you're supposed to be today. And um, we just, I just try to show them different modifications and variations that they can move their arms. Opening their arms out to the side is painful on their shoulders. And it is for a lot of people who've had shoulder replacements, bring the fingertips out in front. It's okay to do it your way, to customize your practice. That's, you know, I want you to feel good. I want you to come because it feels good not because you do it and then at the end of the day, you can't do anything else, you know? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> you said, or I said, well, you said <laughs> on your introduction <laughs> that you have fibromyalgia. And I do know that uh, there's been some research that yoga really helps fibromyalgia. And so I thought I, we could maybe talk about that for people that might either be working with other student with students who have that, or or they themselves have that. About what you found <laughs> of um, how that's been, how yoga has affected that in your body, if if you feel comfortable. 
Yes, now I do. Um, I mean, fibromyalgia is one of the big reasons why my practice became so important to me because I was working and if I wasn't working, I was in bed because my pain was so bad. I couldn't move. My quality of life was uh, really not that great because I was 40 years old or 45 years old and I could only work and stay in bed. And I wanted to do more things. I wanted to have more of a life and, and have more fun. And someone has suggested fiber or to try yoga for the fibromyalgia pain. And I went and um, just a little bit of movements was incredible because I would have small moments of not being in so much pain and it would get bigger, longer times. And I might, I might sleep better. And if I slept better then my pain levels were down and, um, it was really nice that it just gradually helped, um, little by little for me to recover after I might've been working a full day. I, I worked retail at the time and I was the manager of a clothing store and I ran all the time for 10 hours a day. And uh, so it helped me be able to keep up the pace and then be able to do things, not stay in bed so long. And it helped me to get a lot of peace with my body too, because being young at that time and saying, I, I just kept thinking, I'm not, I, what's it going to be like in 20 years? What am I going to, I'm not going to be able to move at all. I'm not going to be able to do anything. I have a young child who wants to enjoy life. And um, so being able to make that peace with my body and say, it's okay, whatever it is, we're going to be fine. We're going to move a little bit today. And then we're going to move a little bit more. And between yoga and doing some swimming, I really got my quality of life back. Got to have a lot more freedom to go places and do things, was able to come off other medications. And I, I'm not saying that that's going to be the case for every single person, but it's worth a try. I've seen people come in with fibromyalgia to a chair class and say from the beginning to the end of the class, well, this part of me doesn't hurt anymore. Mm -hmm. um, just from making the movements. Cause that's the cycle with, with fibromyalgia that I was in, where if I was active, the pain wasn't so bad, but the pain was too bad to be active. So it was just the cycle of, I hurt too much and I'm too tired to do anything, but that was going to be the answer. So once I started moving, then I could move more and then even more. So it's, it's been a big plus for me. Okay. I don't have perfect days every day, but mm -hmm. I know what I need to do. I know what will help. And, um, you know, even the smallest movements make big differences in your body. Okay. So you, you, you modify for yourself when you're doing this. I mean, what kinds of things do you do that helps? So absolutely. So when I started yoga, of course, I come in with this uh, painful body and um, a bigger body. And a lot of times they just, teachers just didn't know what to do with me. They would just say, just take a child's pose or use some props. And they didn't really tell me how to use props. And I wanted to do yoga. I didn't want to, I mean, I know child's pose is yoga, but I didn't want to just stay there. I wanted to do some other things. I came here to move. So eventually I started just learning different ways to modify my practice. Then was grateful that through these other amazing teachers that I've been able to work with have shown me more modifications for practice, uh, for my practice. And so now it just becomes like a little game. When you asked me about modifications earlier, it's like, give me a pose and we'll figure out a way to do it in a chair or we'll figure out a different way to do it. Like it's almost a game. Let's have fun. How can we get the same effects from this pose and what feels good in our body today? So maybe today I do it this way and tomorrow my body might feel differently and I can do it this way. So that's another reason why I like to show maybe four different ways. If I'm lucky, if I can come up with four different ways to do a pose because our bodies feel differently from one day to the next, from morning to evening. And, um, you know, it might feel okay one day and just might not. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Lots of modifications. That's what they're, lots of props. I'm a prop goddess. That's what the props are <laughs> for. We use blocks, straps, 
bolsters, walls, chairs, you name it. I will, it's a prop. I will, we will do yoga with it. So when people come into my class, they always look at me and go, grab everything, right? Yes, just get all the props. Just <laughs> have everything. Have as much of it as you want. <laughs> um, I, I think I saw a picture of you with a large stick. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. yes. So a stick. So we make these fun sticks. My husband and I got creative one day and they're push broom handles. And we sawed off one end and we put these furniture stoppers on each end. And it's a great way, started out as, okay, we're in the chair and we use the stick just to lean forward a little bit deeper and almost find a down dog with the hands on the stick and it opens up the shoulders a little bit more. And then I have a student, so I keep a few at the yoga studio and I have a student who almost always grabs one because if we're doing balancing poses, she used to always have to stand against the wall, but Mm -hmm. now she can stand with her using the stick and she can stand freely on her mat, but just still hold on to the stick for balance and stability. And um, I mean, anything can be a prop. (laughs) Anything can be a prop, I'm telling you. So that was a lot of fun. There's all kinds of fun things to do with it. I really say I need to do more videos using that. Yeah, I just I just was very fascinated by that. I hadn't ever heard of that as being a prop before, but I thought I can see where that would work. <laughs> and I did think, you know, it would be really good for balance, especially if someone's pretty um, unstable. You know, they could that would be uh, I think that would be very helpful for them mentally as well as physically to have that as a help there. Yes, and it was fun trying to come up with like what is going to be the right thing. So we played with different size wooden dowels. And it was my husband who said, let's try a push broom stick. So we were there at like the, you know, the Lowe's, the home labyrinth kind of stores. And um, and, and you buy the stick for the push broom, push broom, you buy them separately. And he said, look at that, like, look at the grip in the hand. It's the right width. And we found the furniture stoppers that were the right size. And, and um, we just put them on and we said, there we go. There's our prop. (laughs) And it was all for under $10. And it was just easy, easy to come up with. (laughs) Yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, I like to end the podcast with an invitation for you to either discuss something we've discussed in more depth or to bring in a brand new topic that you would like um, anyone who's listening to, to know about. All right. So um, I always just like to explain the the B part of the Sunny B Yoga. Obviously, it goes with my last name, Bar B. But um, I I love bees. I love honeybees, bumblebees, all bees. Um, the one thing that I love about the bumblebee is that um, bees, if you look at the way that they're shaped and their weight and then their wing size are it's aerodynamically it is supposed to be impossible for them to fly (laughs) but they fly anyway right Right. and they fly really well (laughs) and and um and I feel that way about our about our yoga is that you can do this uh, if the bumblebee can fly you can do yoga um I also love about the bees is that um their hive, they have this amazing sense of community and that every bee in the hive has a purpose. And that purpose is to serve the greater good of the community. So each bee has one job. It's their dharma. They're, they're what they're supposed to do, their focus. And they all do that. And it makes the hive successful and happy. And I feel that way about yoga. Like this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to help bring yoga to people who don't think, you know, they're supposed to be flying and I'm going to let them know that they're just a bumblebee and they can fly too. Ah, thank you. That was great. (laughs) I love that. Okay. Um, I'm so glad that you came on. You've talked about some really interesting um, topics that I think, uh, you know, will, will make a great podcast. And I think you've, really explained it well. And I think I've got a really good handle on your philosophy of teaching, which is always fun because I think we're all different. We all have our different reasons, but 
<laughs> you and I are probably close in you know, why we would yeah. teach. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I love it. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. Um, I want to give your contact details in case people would like to see those lovely vi- videos, which are really fun, guys. They really are. <laughs> Please, thank you. <laughs> thank okay. you. Website is sunny and it's S U N N Y B yoga dot net. And, yeah, and it's B E E, not the letter B, oh, but it's like the true. bumblebee. Right. Good. Okay. Uh, the same kind of spelling for sunny B yoga on Facebook. And yes. the yoga on Instagram. And yes. there's some really incredible photos of Jackie doing some modifications um, on the Instagram account that I think if you're interested in that kind of thing, they'd be a great resource for you. Thank uh, you. So um, if you ha- are interested in this topic, of, of which we've talked to many, but kind of a, on the general topic, <laughs> um, those are the contacts for Sunny. Uh, for, for Sunny Bee Yoga for Jackie. And I want to really thank you, Jackie. You did a great job. I love your um, bubbleiness. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I really commend you for the, for the um, service that you're providing. Uh, people who, who may not think of themselves as yogis, but you're proving to them that they can be. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that wonderful interview. If you would like to be a guest on Changing the Face of Yoga, please go to my website, www.yogalightness.com.au, and under the Changing the Face of Yoga tab, you can complete Be Our Guest form. After reviewing the form and finding it applicable to this podcast, we will send you a link to schedule an interview. Please download, review, and tell your friends of any podcasts that are of interest to you and to them. If you would like to contact me, send an email to info at yogalightness.com.au. And thank you for listening to Changing the Face of Yoga.